Receive all the glory, receive all the honor. And that's why we are declaring that you are awesome. You're mighty in our lives. And that's why we are humbling ourselves before thy presence and declaring, even as we sing this song, Oh Lord my God, when I'm in awesome wonder. And it's in that mighty and holy name of our Lord we do pray. We want to welcome us this day, even as we prepare to hear from what God has prepared for us. Our hearts are yearning, just like a deer pants for a drink in the water. That is how our hearts are this day, that we would want to hear. Is God still speaking to us? Or are we deaf when he speaks to us? We, have, we pray that the Holy Spirit of God will reveal this to us. Even as we start this service. We want to invite those of us who are watching us on our social media platforms. And we want to thank you so much for being very faithful and loyal. And we invite you to this very special service. And I know that you will be blessed just like us who are here in the sanctuary. We'll sing that one verse. And then we'll be able I'll also I'll invite the prison worship team to come and lead us. Oh, Lord, my God. When I'm in awesome wonder, consider all the words thy hands have made. I see the stars, I hear the rolling thunder, thy power throughout. The universe is then sings my soul, sings my soul, my Savior God to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art, then sings my soul. Savior God to thee. How great thou art. How great thou art. One more time the cross. Then sings my soul. My Savior God to thee. How great thou art. Sings my soul, my Savior God to me. How great thou art, how great thou art. That's our declaration this evening that how great is thou art. And what else can we do but just but to humble ourselves at thy throne of grace and mercy so that we may be able to receive and hear from you. We ask that you start this service with us this day and reign supreme. We come against any thoughts, works, persuasions that are against and contrary to your word and we want to render them powerless, defeated in the mighty name of Jesus. And we pray that all our thoughts will be under your reign and leadership. And it's in that mighty name of Jesus Christ we do pray, believing and trusting. And the people of God say amen. amen. Hallelujah. Can we clap for our Lord? <clears throat> Praise and worship team, come and lead us. Praise God. Buona Sipiwe. I know we have prepared ourselves physically. Now we want to pre prepare ourselves emotionally because 
It's not the same way that you woke up in the morning until evening. It's not in vain that you have come here. Just prepare your mind and yourself, remembering that God in each and every angle of your life. It doesn't matter if you're giving thanksgiving. It doesn't matter if you have a need. But God is not a man that he should lie. The Bible reminds us so deeply that just ask and he shall give, he'll give it to you. So as you prepare yourself, just remember that if anything you ask from him, nothing is impossible. So God bless you all as we prepare in this, in this service. Oh 
He's still crying. We need him. Just take time and tell him we need him every day in our lives. Every day in everything that we do.
because you are God. There is nothing we can compare with you. No one we can run to. No one we can give thanks better than you, God. You cannot substitute with anything, not wealth, not marriage, not children, not rank of the world, God. You are still God, and you stand with us, and you have proved to us that, God, you are God alone. declaration this evening that Lord you come and take care of us Buona tulinde na kushukuru na tunainua jina lako jioni hia leo and katika jina la yesu tumeabudu na kuamini Amen Mpe buwana shangwe na bigele gele Basi mgependa tuweze kuwa mkuwana jioni hia leo Julua jiani yako wako na mnagani Naona watu wame vaa vikoi Tunataka kuingia katika wakati wakuabudu buwana Na kumsifu katika nyimbo za sifa Basi mwambia jirani tafadhali Usi wakati wabaridi jamani Tafadhali geokia jirani mwambia tafadhali jirani Ni wakati wakumsifu buwana you high Jehovah, you high Milele, Mata Ipa, Tumsifu, Yesu, you high, you high Jehovah, you high, you high Milele. Jesus is alive. 
Wapi shangwe na vigele kele Tumcheze buwana kidogo tujamani ah. Kwa madaha mcheze buwana kidogo kidogo tu Coffee at you. Ten, 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 Come on, we're we born.
heaven unto thee, O God. We lift you up, O Jehovah, because of who you are, O gracious Redeemer. Even as we declare great I am, that you may reign in this place, O Jehovah. May every power, Jehovah Father, be brought subject to your authority. We pray, Jehovah Father, that you take control of the spiritual realm around this place, Jehovah. May you rule over Jericho and its environs, O oh God. May the hair above, O oh Jehovah Father, be filled by thy presence. May this sanctuary, O oh Jehovah God, be filled by thy presence. May our lives, O oh great I am, be filled by thy presence. We exalt thee in the highest, O oh God, for you alone are worthy. You alone deserve all the adoration. You alone deserve all the worship, O oh God. None is to be praised except thee, Jehovah. When we remember how you've acted in our favor, Jehovah Father, that even when life becomes too tough, O oh God, you create a way for us, O oh Jehovah. When things do not make meaning, Lord, you bring meaning into them, Jehovah. When our lives are full of hopelessness, O oh God, you are our source of hope, Jehovah. When we are too weak to stand, you are that pillar that we can lean upon. And that is why we say, oh daddy, that your name deserves to be glorified. Your name deserves to be exalted. Because indeed, besides thee, there is none, O oh Jehovah Father. Blessed be the name of the Lord. We worship and honor you, O oh God. We thank you, Lord God Almighty that you are here together with us just to listen to the cry of our hearts, to respond to our desperation, that, Lord, you accept us even in our weaknesses. May you cleanse our being, O oh God, anything that would bar us from experiencing your presence, anything that would bar us from hearing your voice. We pray, Jehovah Father, that you may glance us, O oh God. You can just do a major surgery in our lives, O oh God. Just conduct a major surgery in our minds, O oh God. We want to leave this place a different people. We desire to be ministered to by you, O oh God. We desire to be corrected. We desire to be rebuked. We desire to be encouraged, O oh gracious Lord. We are just like clay in a potter's hand, waiting that you may mold us, O oh God, to the shape that you desire desire, the shape that is best for us, oh God. We might have our own thinking, we might have our own expectation, but Lord, we pray that your will will take prevenance, oh God, that your will is going to prevail upon our lives, Jehovah Father. May you mold us, oh God. There is a cry in my heart that even as I share this one, the Lord is going to mold us. The Lord is going to minister to us. That the Lord is going to transform us through his word. That the Lord is going to just do something new within us. The scripture says that him that is seated upon the throne is making everything new. Let it be a desire in our hearts that we are going to leave this place a different people. That we honor and we glorify you. Because indeed you are loving and caring. Thank you, Jesus Christ. As I minister your word, I pray that you may use me as your vessel, O Lord. May I listen to thy voice and speak thy oracles and thy expectations. Lord, may you silence the, the self in me. And Father, may your voice be heard, O gracious Lord. Blessed be your name even as we ask for thy concentration and understanding. And this is our prayer. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's just give a mighty clap to the living God. He is such a wonderful Savior. Can I hear a shout in the presence of the Lord? Yes, he is a great king. He is alive. He is alive. He is there to continue ministering and operating in our lives. And may every glory be given back to him. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Yeah, I can't hear you. Praise Jesus. Amen. Are you happy to be here today? It's been a while, Bana. Karibu ni tangazwe kwa TV, we pastor me potea. But I'm very much around. I've been away for about three uh, Wednesdays, uh, having other commitments that also required my attention. 
and I'm glad that today uh, God has brought me here. And I just want you to part yourself at the back, yeah? Those who are here, you know, it's, it's a great courage. The weather was not that friendly, like in my manage Kukuja. Jambia, hey, you're that guy, when you let me say, by making it, <laughs> making it today. And, and those who are watching on our uh, social media platforms, we equally appreciate you. By the way, pia we uli nunuwa bundles, ndi oweze kuwatch, yo pia ni effort. Goda kubariki sana, and I believe that you won't regret having spent your money on that. And you can do as a favor of just sharing that link with many, many other people who were not able to make it to be with us here physically. Just share with as many people as you can. Even those of us who are here physically, you can just share these out with your friends that they also be partakers of the wonderful moment that you're going to have here. I'm going to read from Psalm 28, Psalm 28, and I would read verse 1, and then there are many other texts that I would be uh, quoting as we move forward, but for now allow me to read Psalm uh, 28 and verse 1, Psalm 28, verse 1. It says, unto you will I cry, O Lord, my rock. Be not silent to me, lest if you be silent to me, I become like them who go down into the pit. Unto you I cry, O Lord, my rock. Be not silent to me, lest if you be silent to me, I become like them who go down to the pit. The version that uh, we have on our screens talks of, unto you I call, O Lord, I call to you, my rock. Unto you I will cry. Calling, crying has been used as synonyms to praying. Somebody would say, I pray, or I call, or I cry, or I beseech, still uh, means almost one and the same thing. So today I want us to think about this interesting uh, theme and topic that will take us for a number of Sundays as we start the introductory bit today. We are talking of a silent God or deaf Christians. Silent God or deaf Christians. Now the text that we've just read, it's believed to be a prayer of David. And David is expressing some kind of a desperation. Of course, there are versions that talk of, I cry to you. There are versions like the one we have on our screens that talks of, I call upon your name. David is seeking God's attention. He is seeking God's attention in a cry or a call. In other words, he is asking God like, hey, can you hear me out? And one of his plea is that, this God that he refers to his rock may not be silent to him. Do not be silent to him. If I love these other versions that also talk of, do not be deaf to me. A deaf person is somebody who lacks the ability to hear. But in this sense, when uh, David was telling God not to be deaf to him, he really didn't apply that God lacks the ability to hear but that God may listen to that which he says and be able to respond to his cry. And he's saying that if God remains silent, then it implies that he's going to find himself down in the pit. In other words, this voice of God, God speaking and responding to the cry of David was very important because to David, this determines how strong he is going to stand. That if God remains silent, then David is going to be drowned into the pit. So his rescue, his salvation was dependent on the Lord speaking. His, uh, his uh, ability to remain firm and not to be in the pit was dependent on God speaking and not remaining silent. Now, when we talk of the word silence, the English meaning simply means being quiet, not speaking. The way you are, you are silent. 
and in most cases in our days of schooling, would always be asked to remain silent. In other words, don't speak. Be quiet. That is the English meaning of silent. But then, when we continue reading the scriptures, there are other aspects, or even in our day-to-day -day use of this silent. Sometimes we use the word silent to mean to ignore. Yeah? If you say that somebody is silent, sometimes you imply that this person is ignoring you. Do not be silent. Do not ignore. When, let's read Isaiah chapter 64 and verse 12 and see the aspect of silence bringing an understanding of ignore. When somebody says Isaiah chapter 64 and verse, and verse 12, when somebody says that you are silent, this person could mean that you ignore. Nili Mwambia and he was just silent. Yeah? This person could imply that you are ignoring. Lord, after all this, will you restrain yourself? Will you keep silent and afflict severely? If you just read it from the top, the Israelites had just complained to the Lord about the destruction that has faced the city of Jerusalem and many other kinds of challenges, the troubles, the sufferings that they were going through. And at this point, they are now asking God that after all these things have happened, will you still restrain yourself? Will you remain silent now that you've seen all this suffering? Now that you've seen the destruction of Jerusalem, now that you've seen how we are under oppression, are you just going to ignore this? Are you just going to restrain yourself from helping? As in Unaona Nanikama Awoni, in my community, there is a phrase or a proverb that we use uh, mostly to imply something that does not create any impact. Tunasema ya kwamba, Kuchezea mbuzi gita. Awe yoko dito chalma na migone DL gita. Na kuongelesha na nikama na chezea mbuzi gita. If you play a gita to mbuzi, however much that music would be nice, mbuzi itaendelea kukula, it will not feel anything. It will not feel the vibe, the nice music that you bring out. So the word silence has also been used, especially in the context of this text, to mean to ignore. So the Israelites felt that as much as God had already seen their suffering, they've even spoken to God about their pain. And they are now challenging God by asking, are you still going to remain silent after seeing this? Meaning, are you still going to ignore? Because you can't say that you do not know. You know all things. We have spoken to you about them. Are you still going to? Ignore. So silence can as well be used to mean ignore. The other aspect of silence, and in most cases when it's used, it could imply not acting. Not acting. If somebody does not act on an issue, then you talk that you can use the word silence. Isaiah 42 and verse 14. Isaiah chapter 42 and verse 14. So silence could actually be used also, and that is very common even in our uh, contemporary context. If somebody, you say that somebody has not acted, I told him, I told her, but he's just silent about it. It has been swept under the carpet. In other words, there is no action that have been undertaken in relation to what has happened. This is what the scripture says, that I have kept silent from ages past. I have been quiet and restrained myself. But now I will groan like a woman in labor, gasp, a gasping breathlessly. Now, this again comes within a context that uh, portrays the end time. At your own time, you can be able to read uh, chapter 42. That portrays the end time. That God has been silent. He has been quiet. He has not taken any action. As much as sin is full on earth. You know, the devil keeps on tormenting people and God doesn't seem to be taking any action. He has still allowed him to be on earth. And sometimes we wonder, if this God is this powerful, why didn't he just destroy the enemy and get rid of him? 
So if God has not taken such an action, then we will say he has remained silent. And God is saying here that for all those ages in the past, I have remained silent. In other words, I have done nothing about what has been happening. I have not taken any action. But a time has now come that I will groan like a woman in labor, referring now to a point that he's now going to take action and he's going to uh, take this action in a manner that the impact would indeed be felt. So when we are using the word silence, it could come in those three perspectives. Either this person is not speaking, this person is just quiet, or this person is ignoring something that needs his or her attention, or this person is completely not acting, not taking any action. Maybe he has seen, he has acknowledged that it is happening, but he is doing nothing about the same. So we are in a situation having that understanding of silence and also having the understanding of the nature of God. Because we are talking about a God that is all-powerful. We are talking about a God that is all-knowing. We are talking about this God that is everywhere at all times. Could it be possible that such a God can remain quiet? Could it be possible that that God can be able to ignore? Can it be possible that this God might not take any action on the basis of things that are happening? It is unlikely because how can an all-powerful God fail to act? How can an all-powerful God fail to act? If silence means not acting, and then the nature of God is that he is all-powerful. Then how can this God that is all-powerful fail to act? Because when we say he is silent, we could be implying that he's not acting. I've never seen anyone that is in power and that possesses full power failing to act. Because their presence alone will show some action. Right now that I'm speaking to you, if at all my bishops comes here, you will just know that there is someone that has arrived. Yes? Because he has power. He has authority. If the president gets into this compound, you will just know that there is something that is happening around Jericho. In fact, it would pull crowds. Yet, these people have limited powers. What of someone like God that has all power? that he is not under any kind of a limitation, then how can we explain that God may fail to act? That is something that is so unlikely. How can an all-knowing God ignore? At I ignore Haji, yet he knows everything. David says that even if he hides be, be beneath the earth, God is still going to see him. How can he ignore? At Yanajifanya Aoni, how can that happen? Yet he is all knowing. How can he be quiet on his own creation? You know, God invested time. He invested great designs about his creation. Will he just choose to remain silent like he's not speaking to them? He's just quiet on them. Atimungu wa mefura. Kwanya lituumbia nini? Hatuku muambia atuumbe. How can he just create us and then akatai kutuongelesha? Siange wacha kutuumba basi. You know, it does not really make sense that God can take time to create all of us. And the Bible says that he numbers our hair. He knows, ukinyolewa, amejua yoni ni number 351 diu imeanguka. He knows that. So God spends his time to design you in a unique way, such that your fingerprint does not have any copy in the entire world. And then, akufurie, akose kukuongelesha, could this God really be serious with life? I don't think that he can go through all that. And, you know, he had the choice of not creating us, creating the universe, all the things that we are able to see. And then all of a sudden, it is not likely that a God that created the entire universe would keep quiet on his own creation. It is so unlikely that a God who is all-knowing will ignore his people. It is so unlikely 
that a God who is all-powerful will fail to act. In our training, there is a period that we call the intertestamental period. This is the period between the Old Testament and the New Testament. What is the last book of the Old Testament? Ati? Ati nani? Malakai nazikia wengine wanasema Zekaraya. Nigani? And the first book in the New Testament? Matthew. Now, between Malachi and Matthew, it's believed that that period is approximated to have, been, have taken uh, about 400 years. Between Malachi and Matthew. That is between the Old and the New Testament. It is estimated that that period could have taken about 400 years. And this period in the theological cycles, we call it a period when God was silent. That there was nothing going on. Bible, This we get in extra biblical literature, as in vitabu ambavyo haviko kwa biblia or historical books that tells us about that time. That God was silent. In other words, he was not as outspoken as we see in the Old Testament. That you will just be somewhere and then all of a sudden, bush, meshikamoto lakini aichomeki. Like you'll just be somewhere, Abraham just minding his own business with these people and then God appears. Hey, Ebu Toka, wende kwa a place that I'm going to tell you. That Noah is just relaxing and taking his time, enjoying himself, and ambiwa, hey, my friend, Ebu Enda, utengeneze, Noah liambiwa tengeneze nini? The ark. That all these prophets, no? they are just taking their own time, and then God, pap, appears, John, aniaje, Ebu Enda kule ni neve. That in this period, it's believed that God was silent. I have my own doubts that God could have been silent in that period. If he was silent, how then does it come that after these 400 years that is estimated, I might not be sure, I might not doubt that or, or what, but how come that now after this period, then Jesus, is, Jesus comes in. It's now about his birth. He's now looking for Mary and the angel speaking to him. Do you want to tell me that all this period, God was not doing anything that relates to the salvation of humanity? I highly doubt. Because his main intention, even as you start from the book of Genesis, is to save humanity. And retreating, getting back to plan, and actualize whatever is taking place, it does not equal silence. Because we say that silence could mean ignoring. If God was ignoring, then why did Jesus come for the salvation of humanity? To me, he was doing something about humanity. If at all he ignored, then it simply implies that the suffering and the sinfulness of humanity was no longer his concern. If that was so, then Jesus could have not come to be on earth. Beloved, what am I trying to bring out? That God can never be silent. God can never be silent. In those very many words from the time I started, that is actually what I wanted to say. That God can never be silent. He can never ignore. He can never fail to act. Neither will he fail to speak. Could it be then that we are deaf? And I said that a deaf person is somebody that do not hear. If God can never be silent, then it means that he has been speaking. It means that he has never ignored us. It means that he has never failed to act. But then how come 
Just like the text that I read about being silent, you realize that it was the humanity that were complaining about God's silence. And we are here in the, realizing that at no point would God be silent. So what then could be happening? There's a likelihood that maybe Christians are not hearing. How did I get to that? Get with me to your Bible, the book of Matthew, chapter 11 and verse 15. Matthew chapter 11 and verse 15. This phrase is used in very many places, but I will just pick up this one. <coughs> Matthew chapter 11 and verse 15. What does it say? Let's read it together. Anyone who has ears, I almost said hears. Anyone, anyone who has ears, let him. Now, at that point, if you read the entire story, Jesus was talking to his disciples about John the Baptist. Because they asked that it was said that, uh, no, the, the, uh, that Elijah would come back. And so Jesus was explaining who John the Baptist was. And he said that there is no man that had existed on earth that is greater than John the Baptist. He explained why he came and all that. And so at the end of it, then he said, let anyone who has ears listen. Some versions will say, let anyone who has ears hear. Now, the same phrase has been used a number of times in the Gospels. And of course, also in the book of Revelation. When Jesus was giving the parable of the sower, yeah, that planted seeds and some fell on the rock, some fell on the path, some fell on the good soil. At the end of it, he equally used this phrase, that let them that have ears hear. Now, my question is this. If Jesus is speaking to a crowd just the way I'm speaking to you, I believe he could see that they have ears. And still, he tells them that let anyone who has ears Listen or hear. What do you think Jesus meant? Most unlikely. So which kind of ear was Jesus talking about? When Jesus said that let anyone that has, remember he was speaking. He was speaking to this crowd and telling them about the sower and many other areas. And even in the book of Revelation, when John, uh, the, the apostle John was also writing what the Lord spoke to him. And then at the end of it, then they say that let somebody that has ears hear. Meaning that there were people in this place, but not all of them were able to hear. So he's saying that only those that have ears will hear. Remember, as they were speaking, everyone was there. But Jesus noted that there is a likelihood that some people are not going to hear anything. That this could only be heard by those with ears. So there could be something special about hearing the voice of God. There could be a special ear that you require to hear the voice of God. So there is a likelihood that God could speak. That God could shout. But not everyone is going to hear that voice. Because it's only them that have the ears that will hear. God is never silent. However, to hear him, you need an ear beyond the ordinary. Because all of them had the ordinary ears. And Jesus could see these ears. But he still said that let them that have ears hear. In other words, to listen to God, to hear God speak, to know that God does not ignore you, 
to know that God is acting, you need another ear that is beyond the ordinary ear. Praise the Lord. You know, Jesus, remember this time that Jesus was prophesying about his death and suffering. Then Peter, the story is in the book of Mark chapter 8. Then Peter said, told Jesus that no one is going to arrest him, that he is not going to die. Jesus is prophesying and telling his disciples about his suffering and death. Then Peter comes up and says, you are not going to die. And of course, in the life of Peter, we see him trying to defend and protect Jesus even at the time of his arrest by attacking the soldiers that came. But something interesting in this verse, in Mark chapter 8 and verse 33, Jesus calls Peter Satan. Mark chapter 8 and verse 33. Jesus calls Peter Satan. Peter is speaking. And everyone around that place knew that it's Peter that spoke. The Bible says that but turning around and looking unto his disciples, he rebuked Peter and said, Get behind me, Satan, because you are not thinking about God's concern, but man's. Everyone saw Peter speaking. Everyone heard Peter speaking. But Jesus did not hear Peter. Who did he hear? He heard Satan speaking. And therefore, he did not tell Peter to get behind him. He told Satan to get behind him. You need an extraordinary ear, an extraordinary eye to see and to hear the voice of God. Because to these disciples, it was Peter that spoke. But to Jesus that had a different ear, did he not hear Peter? He heard Satan speaking. And so there is a likelihood that God, being a spiritual being, could be speaking to us, could be shouting. But because we do not have that extraordinary ear to get to hear that which God says, we feel that he's silent. We feel that he's ignoring us. We feel that he's not acting. And we feel that he is quiet. Beloved, with this series, by the time we are through, you will be surprised how much and how consistently God has been speaking. Only that we've not been listening. Or rather, only that we've been deaf. God has been consistently and persistently speaking. But because we do not hear. For hearing is only meant for those who have ears. Then we fail to listen. I want us to end there for today. And next Wednesday, I will be pushing it further on helping us understand then how does this God speak such that it only requires a special ear for us to hear. I just want us to rise on our feet. And our prayer tonight, even those that are watching us online, just want you to plead with the Lord to give you this ear that he's talking about. Definitely this ear does not imply the ears that we have. If it was so, then everyone could have heard. Everyone could have listened. It takes a special ear. Can you just be able to have a small meeting with the Holy Ghost? Asking him to give you that ear. That you will be among those people that will be having ear to ear. It is a waste of time not to listen or not to hear that which God speaks. Because whatever he speaks defines our destiny. Whatever he speaks defines the kind of life that we are going to live. Whatever he speaks 
defines the actions that we need to take. If clear Jehovah Father that will never mistake it for any other voice. Neither will we mistake other voices for your voice, O oh God. Father, we want to hear you speak to us, O oh Jehovah Father. Lord God Almighty, we do not want to miss it out. We do not want to miss it out, O oh Lord. We know that it is in your good intention always that we hear you. You are always there, Lord, giving us direction, giving us instructions. May you minister to each and every one of us, Lord. Thank you, gracious Savior. We believe you shall speak to our situations, Lord. You shall speak to our lives. The areas, Lord, that we are so confused, we do not know which direction to take. Father, you've been speaking, and we shall only learn to get that here so that you heal our being deaf, that we can be able to hear you. Father, we bless and we honor your holy name. Thank you, Jesus Christ. May you minister to your people, Lord, in areas of sicknesses, O oh, gracious Savior. May your touch be upon us, O oh God, and relieve us from every pain of the body in the name of Jesus. I speak healing to every part of our being that is not well in the name of Jesus. I rebuke every spirit of infirmity that, Lord God Almighty, you are restoring our health in the name of Jesus. That anything that has been sent to us by the evil one to torment us, to take away our peace, we recover that which belongs to us in the name of Jesus. Gracious Lord, may you give us victory in every area of battle. May you give us a deep desire for you to be in your presence that we shall never tire, O oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, gracious Savior, for every need that is represented here. May your spirit move. May your spirit operate in our lives, O oh God. May your spirit arrest everything that is contrary to your will. May your spirit and fire consume every hand that is withholding our blessings, Jehovah God, that we may be able to experience you. Thank you, gracious Lord. And it is in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen, amen, amen. Thank you. Another round of applause. Indeed, the Holy Spirit of God has used our vicar in a very mighty way. And now it has been revealed to us that God has always been speaking to us. But it is us who have been deaf in our hearing. May he continue. May the Spirit of God open up our ears so that we may be able to hear what our God has to tell us. And now to worship our God with our giving, I would like to invite the praise and worship team to wait on us. And those of us who are watching us on our social media platforms, for you to worship us with the, to worship God with the, your giving, our pay bill number is 734618. You will see it on your screens out there. Kindly just come before the Lord and worship him with your giving. May God bless you.
declaration this evening that indeed we need to pray because God who sees in the secret will answer you in the open. I want to invite our vicar to give us the final prayers and announcements and even the benediction as well. May God continue blessing you. Praise the Lord. Do you desire to know how God speaks? Yes, yes. That's a very common question that I used to ask myself. And you'd be surprised of how he speaks. So don't afford to miss it next Wednesday. I'll be continuing with that, how God speaks. We'll be talking about the different voices. The series is heavy, the different voices, how you can be able to evaluate every voice that you hear and know exactly that which is of God. So I believe it would be helping. Now that we've learned about how to talk to God, we also need to know how he speaks to us. Is that okay? And then on Sunday, the 22nd, we're also starting a new series on the, in our services. And that is also interesting. We'll be talking about a kingdom of violence. <laughs> yeah? A kingdom of violence. It would be interesting to know the violence that is in this kingdom that God has called us into. So that starts on the 22nd of this month. And the 29th, praise the mama ni nikue mpole. 29th of August, nitobo esiri. Now, 29th of August, this team has been working. You know, Sundays when I up and pack a journey, there is something huge that is happening on the 29th of August from 2 p.m. It is a worship experience that would really, 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 really bring a lot of change. The theme is about hope. It's been a tough year for us and that God has brought us to this past, the first half of this year. Indeed, it's still heavy on us. So this worship experience will be talking to us about hope and a lot is happening behind the scenes. So please keep that date safe and don't afford to miss it. And so if you can't miss it, why would that friend, why would that neighbor miss it? Is that okay? So reach out to very many people for all these activities, both on Sundays and Wednesdays, we are going to get in depth into the word of God. And I believe that it shall be a great blessings to us. I'm not sure whether I'm forgetting anything, but I highly, I highly doubt. So let us pray. Almighty and everlasting Father, we thank you that you gave us the strength and the grace to be here this evening. 
for a moment of worship, prayer, and also just to break your word. And indeed, Jehovah Father, we are looking forward just to get to know how we can be able to hear you and also how you speak. Probably, Lord, that has not been so much clear to us. We are disparate to hear you, O oh God. Father in heaven, we pray, Jehovah Father, thanking you for this offer tree that your people has given. This is just but a portion of the many blessings that you've put for us. Father, we pray that you may receive it as an honor, O oh God, even as it is used for your work in this church. But Lord, whichever area of need that this offer tree is aimed at, even as your people mention them silently in their hearts, Lord, I pray that may this be a seed that is going to germinate to that area of need. Gracious and everlasting Savior, we pray that as we go home, may you disperse us with your peace. Protect each and every one of us, O oh Lord. And the presence that we felt in this place, let it accompany us to our homes. That gracious Savior, it would neutralize and destroy every works of the enemy. May we experience your greatness and your goodness in our homes. And now I pray that the peace of God which surpasses man's understanding, keep your souls and your minds in the knowledge and love of God the Father and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessings of God Almighty, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit to be with you and remain among you always. Amen. Beloved of the Lord, as you go, go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. In the name of Christ, amen. Amen. Hope to see you on Sunday and also next Wednesday. Thank you.